Hello all and welcome to the Lucretia Report. I'm Ian and today on the report, we're gonna talk about the Confederacy. Wish I was in the land of what? No! No, stop that! In my opening sequence you just watched, I show a number of images which I feel depict significant moments in an eternal struggle against tyranny. You may have noticed these two, so you can probably guess where my opinion on the Confederacy is. But can you guess where I'm from? Did you guess Texas? It, it's Texas. And my biological father's family is from Alabama. This guy is Alexander Stevens, the Vice President of the Confederacy and some distant relation of mine. Or maybe not, you know how that stuff is. It's no stretch of the imagination to call me a southerner. And am I prideful of my confederate roots? No, no I'm not. Alexander Stevens and his brood were not defending their homelands. They were not fighting for freedom. They were traitors. Literally, there is no more accurate definition of what treason is than rebelling against your country, waging war upon it, and murdering 800,000 of its people. And they weren't fighting for states' rights either. Well, they were fighting for one state's right in particular. The right to own slaves. When Wisconsin exercised their state's right not to enforce the Fugitive Slave Act, the South took them to the Supreme Court over it. Alexander Stevens, this guy again, said of the Confederacy that its foundations are laid, its cornerstone rests upon the great truth that the Negro is not equal to the white man, that slavery, subordination to the superior race, is his natural and normal condition. The Confederate Constitution said, in all such territory the institution of Negro slavery as it now exists shall be recognized and protected by Congress. South Carolina, Alabama, Texas, Arkansas, Mississippi, Georgia, and Virginia all mention slavery in their ordinances of secession. Even Prager U agrees that the war was about slavery. Was the American Civil War fought because of slavery? Slavery was, by a wide margin, the single most important cause of the Civil War for both sides. Prager U, the people who said this. It seems that the less the climate changes, the louder the voices of the climate alarmists get. This really shouldn't even be a discussion we have to have. Yet only 38% of Americans believe that the Civil War was about slavery. Why? That's crazy. But it's a central tenet to the Lost Cause myth. Vox made a good video about the Lost Cause that you can check out. It was one of the inspirations for this video, link below. But what it is, is the myth that the Confederacy and the men who fought for it were righteous and honorable. Coming to prominence after the Civil War, and especially around the time of World War I, when Confederate veterans were starting to die out, the Lost Cause myth was promoted by self-styled Southern historians. White supremacists. And by groups like the United Daughters of the Confederacy and the Sons of Confederate Veterans. When I was a kid, I was at a museum once. I think it was when we were visiting Vicksburg. And some man who worked there told my brother and I that we should join the Sons of Confederate Veterans. Thank God I didn't. We'll get into their motives later, but their goals were to glorify the Confederacy in their rebellion. And since Confederate history is revolting, they had to rewrite history to do that. The three main goals of the Lost Cause myth are to glorify Confederate soldiers and their leaders, to present that slavery was something good for both the slave and the master, and to teach that the Civil War was not about slavery. The most famous thing they did, which has become quite high profile now, is to erect hundreds of Confederate monuments around the country. They explicitly sought to glorify Confederate soldiers and their leaders with these, and to promote their version of history. I won't go into depth about why these should be gotten rid of, because every other channel on YouTube already has. Check out John Oliver's video if you want to know more. But what I don't think we should forget about is the many other ways that the Lost Cause myth has permeated our society, especially if you're from the South. In the Vox video I mentioned earlier, they talk about how the Lost Cause was perpetuated through the 20th century by textbooks taught to children, which minimized slavery and glorified the rebellion. But they don't bring up how that still goes on today. While not to the degree that it was in the 1950s, many schools still teach Lost Cause curriculum. Houghton Mifflin Harcourt's Texas United States History, taught in schools around Texas, basically takes the stance that 
Slavery was bad, but not that bad. They say, the treatment of enslaved Africans varied. Some slaves reported that their masters treated them kindly. To protect their investment, some masters provided adequate food and clothing to their slaves. Isn't that nice of them? Many enslaved Africans found comfort in their community and culture. They made time for social activities, even after an exhausting workday, to relieve the hardship of their lives. Oh, doesn't that sound fun? In Virginia, they teach that thousands of loyal slaves took up arms to fight for the Confederacy. And in 2010, Texas started teaching Jefferson Davis's inaugural with equal prominence as Abraham Lincoln's. Come on, Texas, you're making us look bad. I myself was taught in school that the Civil War was fought over states' rights and taxes, of all things. As evidence for this, they taught us about the nullification crisis of 1832. You may notice that 1832 is three decades before the Civil War. This is not even to mention the slew of artwork which you may enjoy today, which is designed to promote the lost cause. The more overt ones, like Birth of a Nation and The Klansmen, have lost popularity for obvious reasons. But have you ever seen Gone with the Wind? It only won a Pulitzer Prize and 10 Academy Awards and was the highest grossing film of all time up to that point, that's all. Ah yes, the story of the graceful southern debutante Scarlett O'Hara and her gallant Confederate officer Rhett Butler as they go up against the evil Yankees while surrounded by their happy slaves. Don't you doubt Miss Mellie's word. Ashley Wilkes was literally a Klansman, and he's supposed to be the good guy in that book. What about the Disney movie, Song of the South, which depicts slavery like this? That's what Uncle Rima said. Thank Charlie and Polka Dots. That's how the leopard got his spot. Zippity doo da, zippity a. Okay. You ever listen to Dixie? Wish I was in the land of what? Old no, there no, stop that. <laughs> old times there are not forgotten, huh? Yeah, I bet. Do you want to hear the stanza that they tried to make you forget? Southrons, hear your country call you. Up, lest worse than death befall you. Hear the northern thunders mutter, northern flags and south winds flutter. Send them back your fierce defiance. Stamp upon the cursed alliance. What alliance are they referring to, by the way? America wasn't allied to any countries during that war. Is it the alliance with black people? Is that what they mean? In order to preserve the myth of the Honorable Confederate, they have to make slavery look not so bad, because if they admit that slavery was evil, then they have to admit that the Confederacy was evil as well. In order to preserve the myth of the Honorable Confederate, they have to make the North look brutal, because if they admit that the North was good, then people ask why they fought. And if people ask why they fought, they have to be told that the cause was righteous, for if they admit that the true cause was to preserve slavery, then the myth of the Honorable Confederate is shattered. When I go to Alabama to visit family, it seems that every second house has a Confederate battle flag. My cousin has boots that have it on them. This isn't the Confederate flag, by the way. This is. This is the Confederate battle flag, which I think makes it worse. They call it the rebel flag, and they say that it represents their rebel pride. But it's all BS, isn't it? The war was about slavery and slavery was evil. I don't think I have to explain why those two things are true. At least I hope I don't. And do you know what's a synonym for rebel? Traitor. So what's up? Why do people want the lost cause to be a thing at all? Well, this is my opinion, but I think it's one of two things for each person. The first one, elephant in the room, is racism. Believe it or not, but a lot of people are racist. And those that are, have an obvious interest in glorifying the Confederacy. But I don't think that's what it is for most people. I think that for most people, it's an issue of guilt. Your family supported the Confederacy, your family fought for the Confederacy, your state or your town supported the Confederacy, and you want to think of them fondly. You don't want to think that your ancestors were evil, and you don't want to think that their evil deeds reflect on you. And to that, I have this to say. You're not responsible for what they did. I used to live in Germany, and you know, not a lot of people know this, but one of the things you'll find most often in Germany is German people. I met plenty of German people, and just statistically, I know that many, many of them had grandparents and great-grandparents 
who were Nazis. But no one ascribes those crimes to them. Not because the Germans have rewritten history. On the contrary, they're all very aware of the crimes of their grandparents. And the Nazis? They fell 74 years ago. The Confederacy? Fell 154 years ago. If you were born on the same day that the last Confederate veteran died, you would be 67 right now. And he was 104 when he died. There might not be anyone left in the world who can remember having met a Confederate veteran. There are still Nazis alive. No, I don't mean them. I mean actual German members of the National Sozialische Deutsche Arbeiterparty. Some of them are still alive. And besides, chances are your ancestor was manipulated into fighting for the Confederacy anyway. The slave culture of the antebellum South was built around wealthy elite landowners promoting the oppression of an enslaved race. But it was also built around those same wealthy elite landowners trying to convince poor non-slaveholding whites that they should uphold the interests of the elite. Like most oppressive regimes, it manipulated the people for the benefit of the upper class. The only reason that anyone would ascribe the crimes of your ancestors to you is if you support those crimes or try to minimize them. And the best way to show everyone that that's the case is to support this myth of the lost cause. If Germany can accept that they did not commit the crimes of their grandfathers, then why can we not accept that we didn't commit the crimes of our great-great-great-great-grandfathers? The Confederacy was not a righteous, elegant, and glorious cause. It was a treason, orchestrated by elitists, to manipulate the working man into fighting to preserve a despicable institution. And when Lost Cause rhetoric is thrown at you, when it tells you that the war was not over slavery, and that slaves were happy, and that the Americans were brutal, and that the Confederates were heroic, when that happens, you must be prepared. Arm yourself with the truth, so that they cannot bamboozle you. I'll leave you with that for now. Do you have any friends who believe in the Lost Cause? Tell me in the comments below. And if so, show them this video. Let me know on Twitter what comes of it. If you like this, be sure to like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time on the Lucretio Report. Seek Semper Tyrannus.